the, to the study already. So I want to present data on, um, on our trial with uh, multiple sclerosis patients. So acupuncture for patients with multiple sclerosis associated fatigue, a randomized controlled trial. So, but before I have to declare that uh, I don't have any conflict of interest, it was an investigator initiated trial and because there were Chinese acupuncturists involved here, I have to state that they were funded by the first teaching hospital of Tianjin University of Traditional Chinese Medicine. In Tianjin, in China, they came from that place. So, you might know that in multiple sclerosis, the insulating covers of the nerve cells in the brain and or in the spinal cord are damaged. And actually, most of the patients with multiple sclerosis suffer from fatigue. For me, it was quite surprising because in medical school, I haven't learned this, that this is actually one of the most important symptoms in uh, these kind of patients. So what is fatigue? Fatigue is a subjective lack of physical or mental energy or both, which interferes with usual or desired activities. And in that patient group, this is the major cause of unemployment. And unfortunately, no evidence-based therapy is available, so at least no very convincing one. Um, Mindfulness-based stress reduction and acupuncture are already used, or at that time they were already used, and we wanted to evaluate them. So what was the objective of our trial? We aimed to evaluate whether acupuncture or mindfulness-based stress reduction, in addition to usual care, are effective in reducing fatigue in MS patients compared to usual care alone. Therefore, we designed a three-armed study. Follow-up time was 26 weeks, three groups, one group acupuncture plus usual care, one group MBSR plus usual care, and one group only usual care. Usual care uh, could be um, medication and so on. I, I go more into the details later. The primary outcome was measured after 12 weeks. It was the fatigue severity scale. But we really had difficulties with recruiting. Uh, multiple sclerosis patients are a quite difficult population. A lot of studies are ongoing with these kind of patients. And we had to decide to scale down our trial. So at the end, uh, we only recruited for acupuncture plus usual care and usual care alone. We included adults up to the age of 65 years with multiple sclerosis. The fatigue had to be uh, for at least three months and they had to have a fatigue score of at least four on the fatigue severity scale. And the treatment had to be stable at that time. Uh, we excluded patients uh, who had fatigue because of a malignant disease, uh, patients who had an acute relapse or a cortisone therapy within the previous 30 days before the inclusion, which were severely disabled or had severe depression. And we also excluded patients who wanted to start something new for uh, uh, their fatigue, which could interfere with our study. So what was the acupuncture we used? Uh, it was not that easy to define the acupuncture in our German university setting. Uh, so we involved a lot of experts. And finally, we, we used an acupuncture which was uh, developed in, in Tianjin, China, called Xinhao Kaichiao acupuncture. Uh, and it was adapted for, for German patients. So in Germany, most of the time, especially when you, are, when you have patients with fatigue, two times a week is enough. In China, they treat much, much more often, two times a day, uh, sometimes five days a week or even more. So this we have to keep in mind. So altogether, uh, patients in our study were treated 24 uh, times. Uh, 
with about 20 minutes of acupuncture. Um, they were treated by quite well experienced acupuncturists which were trained in, in Tianjin, China. And it was, uh, we used a semi-standardized acupuncture protocol. Also, DO26, which was already mentioned here, was used as a very important point and also other points. And in case patients had motor deficits, HART1 and bladder 40 were also used in this formula. Usual care was no study-specific treatment. So the patients could use what they had already used for their fatigue before they started with the study. For instance, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or amantadine. So what did we measure? We had quite a lot of outcome measures, quite these, just a few of them. So we measured fatigue. With two different scales, we used the fatigue severity scale as the primary outcome uh, after uh, 12 weeks and the modified fatigue impact scale. We evaluated sleep, we evaluated depression, we evaluated function and also quality of life. Before I uh, start with the results, a few words about the statistics. So uh, our sample size calculation was based on the assumption that we could find a um, difference in the fatigue severity scale of one point. So around that area uh, it is supposed to be clinically relevant. Um, we assumed a power of 80% uh, and alpha of 5% and two-sided. Yeah. And we also had to um, um, calculate with an attrition rate of about 20%. So we would need 47 participants per group. And of course, for the analysis, uh, that should be based on uh, the intention to treat principle. And we used an ANCOVA and uh, adjusted for, for sex and the respective baseline value. So when we look into the baseline characteristics, you can see that we included middle-aged, mainly female participants. Yeah. Uh, with a uh, multiple sclerosis history of about 10 years and a fatigue history of about 4 years and uh, quite a mixture of uh, um, multiple sclerosis which represents the average, population, uh, average MS population quite well. And there were, was just a, a little difference in MS uh, medication. So when we look into the baseline characteristics of the outcome, groups were quite comparable. So they, they were fatigued, yeah, but they hadn't uh, uh, have uh, sleep difficulties. So no sleep disturbance. These values are quite low. Yeah. Uh, higher values would indicate um, sleep disturbance. They were not depressed. Function <coughs> was also quite well. Uh, so above 5.5 5. 5, uh, indicates bad function, but quality of life was affected in this group. So here are the results for the fatigue after 12 and 26 weeks. Yeah? We, we see statistically significant differences between the acupuncture group and the usual care group. Yeah? The differences are not that high. Um, they are assumed to be um, clinically borderline relevant. So you can, of course, you can calculate an effect size, then you might get a medium effect. Uh, when you ask scientists about clinical uh, relevance, they sometimes say a uh, difference of the fatigue severity scale of 1 is clinically relevant. S uh, some also say uh, 0 0.7 is already clinically relevant. Um, also for the other fatigue score, we see uh, a statistically significant difference. What might be quite interesting here is then when we look into responder rate, and here we have a quite clear definition what can be a responder for fatigue, yeah? an FSS of um, lower or equal to 4, 
we see quite a difference. The acupuncture group had a six times higher chance to be a responder than the usual care group. Of course, the confidence intervals are quite broad, but it's, it's quite interesting to see these results. Uh, when we look into the additional outcomes after 12 and 26 weeks, I mean sleep, we don't see any differences uh, for uh, both groups. We only see a trend for the 12 weeks, but um, I explained that there w was no sleep difficulties. So how should we affect the sleep then? Yeah. Um, also for depression, we don't see any differences. And also for function, we don't see differences. Um, and in quality of life, we unfortunately couldn't see uh, any differences as well between the two groups. So, if the results are more than placebo effects, what might be potential contributing mechanisms behind this? So, and when you look into the literature and also uh, in, in one of our own data, uh, there might be something behind this uh, from neuroscience studies. So, uh, fatigue and multiple sclerosis is driven by resting state functional connectivity changes of the default mode ne network. There's some quite good data on this from, from last year. Uh, also from uh, our cooperation partners, uh, which also used uh, quite a few of our patients for, the, uh, for their um, FMI trial. Uh, they found out that the superior ventral striatum uh, might, uh, might be a key integrational hub impaired uh, in multi uh, multiple sclerosis-related fatigue. And what was also shown uh, was uh, increased connectivity between the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and the sensory cortical areas. So all these areas or networks can be affected by acupuncture. There are studies about this which show this. So these might be contributing mechanisms, but unfortunately there is no study uh, on this. We might be able to have a look into our data because a subset of our patients was um, evaluated with fMRI, but uh, we don't have any um, analysis yet on this. So, of course, we also have to look into the uh, limitations of our trial, but I would like to start with the strengths. Yeah. We could do uh, quite big, at least for a sample with MS patients, randomized controlled trial. We had a comparably high compliance and follow-up rate, and we got quite a broad picture of, um, of the uh, outcomes. Maybe on the, on the minus side is that we had to adapt the treatment to the Western setting. And it might be that in a Chinese setting, we see a completely different picture. Unfortunately, we couldn't blind the intervention. And it was only a single center trial. So I would conclude, acupuncture in addition to usual care was statistically significant superior to usual care alone. Uh, the effect was small with a trend towards clinical relevance and particularly with, the re, uh, with regard to the limited treatment options we, we have um, for MS patients, acupuncture might be beneficial. Huh? Just try. But more research is needed. Thank you very much and I would like to thank the whole research team and the whole cooperation group. Thank you.